Hey, I'm David Levin, and welcome to Pop Goes the Culture, the behind the scenes and untold stories you probably wouldn't have known from the people who lived them. Today, Hal Linden talks about the final episode of Barney Miller and the real reason why Danny Arnold, the creator, decided to voluntarily end the series. Hal tells us about watching a Barney Miller marathon and helped how it felt to see the show years after it went off the air. And he walks us through the work week while they were in production. Here's Hal Linden. Well, let's talk about final episodes, because for years there were no final episodes in television. Then Mary Tyler Moore all of a sudden had this last episode. So talk about that. Well, first of all, Barney Miller was never canceled. It was retired. Danny wanted to do it the year before. Television shows have a, a, are cannibalistic. They feed upon themselves. Uh, by definition, you get a a hit show, and immediately the second writing team, that is not the producers, but the, f the second writing team, are cannibalized by the other, uh, by the other networks, or their own network. Mm -hmm. And go tell a writing team, no, stick with Barney Miller. When, when the network is saying, what would you like to do? You can run it yourself. So every year, that once you're successful, every year there's a, uh, a loss of writing staff. And so the seventh people move up to sixth, and the sixth people move up, you know. And eventually, what happened in the next of the last year was Danny was having trouble finding people who could execute. So he wanted to cancel it the year, the, the year before. And uh, there were some contractual reasons he couldn't, I don't remember. But in the final year, he said, look, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to solicit scripts. And I'll spend, you guys go work on Bonnie Miller. I'm going to go sit and read scripts from college kids, anybody. Could they write a Barney Miller? Could they execute a Barney Miller? And he just, for three months, that's all he did was read scripts, submissions from every agent, every, you know, every writer's agent in town. And uh, I remember about the fourth or fifth week that year, he came down and said, gentlemen, I have just <laughs> done my, my duty. I've read every script in town. And... Uh, most of it was repetitive stuff, uh, you know, how to write a Bonnie Miller sp script. Well, you write, you write a, a, a Jack Sue coffee joke, and then you write a, a you know, a, a gambling or whatever, you know, a, a rant for, uh, for uh, Dietrich, you know, one of those. And they were just repetitions of everything we had done, and nothing new, no imagination. And he said, he, you know, Danny was not only the creator, he was the producer. He owned it. This was a, an independent production. This was not from one of the major studios. This was independent. So he was in charge of himself, which was one of the interesting things. We never had anybody on the set saying, gentlemen, we, we, can we get to it? We, do we need another take? You know, we never had that. Danny said the only reason to do Barney Miller was to do something that we are proud of. And I tell you, I never, ever walked away from a, a, an episode saying, we'll do better next week. Never. And which, which, my point being yeah. that in the last year, it was the first time a script came down, we sat and read a script that I went upstairs to Danny. I said, Danny, read this. I don't think it's, and he read it. And uh, came back at lunch and said, gentlemen, go home. We'll, uh, we're not going to shoot this script. We'll do something else. And the next day we came, was another script. Uh, so what happened is he really ran out of the writing basis. And this show was founded on writing. We didn't ad-lib anything. We didn't make up any of those jokes. We didn't create any of those laughs. They were all written, rewritten, honed. This show was crafted. So he said, I think what we should do is close it down. 
you go on to your next career, you go on to your next career, I'll go on to mine. Some of us will be successful, some of us won't. But at least we had this moment where we'll never have to go home and apologize for what we did. And that, and you know, that's an amazing thing in a career. You know, when I think of all the times I couldn't wait for the, you know, the last shot so I can go home because I knew I'd, I didn't want to be, I never wanted it never to be seen. And that's why, and that's the way the show ended. And Danny just came up with that ending. He, I think he actually wrote the last show. He hadn't written it for a long time. Everybody split, right? They closed down the, the They closed the precinct house. And what he did was he had a kind of a, an all-star cast of all the people who had either been robbed or, you know, the memorable, <laughs> <coughs> even a few of the memorable criminals, you know, who came by to say goodbye. It was just, a, you know, a little tearjerker. And I'll tell you, the first take of the last scene where the guys, all the one by one made their exits. And, uh, those of us who were the emotional types, I remember Max Gale was blubbering, blubbering, and I, I couldn't hold the tears back trying to get the lines out. He was so touching. And then when it was over, they said, okay, that was for us. Now let's do one for the audience. <laughs> Everybody relax. This is not the end of the world. It may be for you, but it's not for the character. You're moving on to other careers. Let's take out and played a little, so that we were able to do it a little more restrained. It was still a tough. Have you watched it, that episode since? Have you seen it since? No, no, I haven't seen that one. I'll tell you, when Barney went on TV Land, they had that um, uh, marathon, and I remember I was home that weekend. Uh, I don't remember what I was doing. I didn't, at dinner, I said to my wife, wait a minute, this is the weekend of the marathon. I ran into my office and I put on Barney Miller at about nine o'clock. At one o'clock in the morning, I was still watching Barney. I could not turn it off. See, one of the things is we never saw them because we shot on Thursday nights when it was on the air. Now, the first time it went on the air, yes, we all stopped and we watched it live. And, the second time, some of us did, and the others kept working. And the third time, we just ignored it and went, went on about our business. Uh, so I never saw most of the episodes. Eventually, in syndication, I would catch it, and uh, you know, and I'd be getting dressed at six thirty in, in Chicago somewhere, and then we'd be on, you know. Uh, but I never saw them. I own all the episodes. I have them in, but who sits down to watch this? Uh, I sat there, I could not turn it off. I must have stayed up till two o'clock, two, three in the morning. I couldn't turn it off. They were so, first of all, I didn't remember them. <laughs> so I was hysterical, laughing at them. That's so funny, because it's like so you do so many episodes and they're just like they blend into each other at a certain point, I would guess. I had a, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've said this many times. We came in and our schedule was very strange because we didn't have an audience. We evolved into a four-day shoot, four-day thing. We would come in on Monday morning, read, and then go to work and stage because we only had <laughs> a first act or something. Uh, we would be, you know, by the time... We didn't have a, what they call a, um, a blocking day because there was no audience. So we actually shot it like a film. On the third day, we would all get into makeup and start at the beginning of the show and do it scene by scene. Uh, even if we didn't have the end of the show yet. And, uh, and then we would, so we had a two-day filming of Bonnie Miller. It, took, it always took two days plus, because we always went to like two o'clock in the morning, or sometimes six o'clock in the morning, I don't know. <clears throat> but, um, but I would come in the next Monday, sit to, to read the new script, not only could I not remember a line from the last week's show, I had difficulty remembering what it was about. 
that one had to erase everything from one's mind just mm -hmm. for self-protection. They had to erase everything and start all over again. So. Next time, Hal Linden tells us the inside story of the late nights shooting Barney Miller and how exhausted they were at the end of a long week. He remembers shooting episodes with no endings written until the very last minute at 2 in the morning the importance of a writer's words. We'll talk about the highs and lows of her career. We'll talk about the Barney Miller rap party. And he also laughs at how the rumors of Abe Goda's death started way back when. That's a story you're gonna wanna hear. Now, when we recorded this, Abe was still alive, although he is actually dead now. We'll also talk about Abe's career and how Fish was created. Plus, what does Hal think that Barney Miller is up to today? Don't miss it, I'll be here, so should you. Until then, what was your favorite Barney Miller moment? Thanks for watching.